Hi students, let us continue with assessing alternative architectural design. So in the previous video, I have just given a basic idea about how to assess an alternative architecture. First, you have to identify the different styles which depends upon the requirements. And after that, you have to combine all the different styles and from that you have to derive a new design. So that design has to best fit for your requirements that is the alternative design so and ask, assess the different alternatives by asking the questions regarding data and control and the finally the prim, uh, preliminary idea of uh, assessing the alternative architecture design is regarding the quality of the design now let us see uh, the different assessing alternative architecture is uh, the one one of the method we will use is the architecture trade-off analysis method ATAM method. So this is one of the method for assessing alternative architecture design. So what is that ATAM architectural trade of analysis method. So this was developed by Software Engineering Institute SEI. So the SEI uh, group of institution is developed this ATAM and it is one of the iterative process. So it is always uh, the for uh, the life cycle it is follow is the iterative process means by taking different requirements from that and it is always uh, uh, again checking rechecking so it is an iterative process and perform required activities in sequence okay so uh, how this architecture trade-off analysis method is used for assessing alternative architectural design so what what the steps it is followed to uh, assess the alternative architecture design for any product for uh, for the requirements whatever we are having so first they have collect the scenarios the first step uh, this architecture trade off analysis method will do is collecting the scenarios so what is this what they are going to collect so first they collect the use cases the use cases are developed to represent the system from the user point of view so they will collect different use cases. The main use of these use cases are used to represent the system from the user point of view. So if the users can understand, means the customer, if the customers can understand what the developers are going to do, then it will be best for them uh, to continue with the project. So first they collect the scenarios. So next, elicit requirements, constraints and environment description they have to take like information required for requirement engineering. So whatever the requirements will be there, that information has to be acquired by the developers. Elicit, that is a requirement engineering. Elicit requirements, constraints and environmental description has to be taken. First, collect the scenarios. Next, they have to take all this description. After that, they describe the architecture style or patterns chosen to address scenarios and requirements okay they have taken the requirements from the user after that they are describing the architectural styles they are introducing the architectural styles chosen to address scenarios and requirements so they will follow module view process view and the data flow view so uh, whatever the requirements they are taken so next they have to be uh, represent describe the requirements in a module view means they divide the complete pro uh, product into different modules so that will be represented in module view how the data uh, process will be taken in each module so that is a process view next is a data flow view everything will be represented in architectural style okay first they'll collect the use cases requirements and architectural styles after that evaluate the quality attributes independently so in each view in the model view process view data flow view in everything in each view we have to cal evaluate evaluate the quality attributes independently so yeah, there is no connectivity between these so once we are uh, developing the modules means first you have to uh, the modules will be acting independently after that finally they are integrated so we have to evaluate the quality attributes independently so what are the quality attributes that are present in each view they have to we have to check the reliability performance security maintainability flexibility testability portability reusability and interoperability 
so we have to check uh, we have to calculate the quality of attributes in each view okay we designed the architecture styles and we evaluate the quality attributes independently in each scenario after that we have to identify the sensitive points for architecture so whatever we have taken whatever the attributes we have taken in everything we are we will get some sensitive points for architecture any attribute significantly affected by variation in the architecture so that sensitive points will affected by variations in the architecture that may lead to some disturbance or some uh, the disturbance may be a positive or negative okay so you have to identify what are the sensitive points for the architecture if you want to design a model view if you module view if you want to design a process view data flow view what are the sensitive points that will uh, came across for architecture that we have to be identified so finally the critic candidate architecture will be developed from by using from step 3 that is for describing architecture styles using sensitive analysis so with the help of this by taking the consideration of sensitive point of architecture we are going to develop describe the architectural style okay so this is about this uh, the assessing alternative architecture method that is a architecture trade off analysis method so these are the steps you have to be followed to design this architecture trade off analysis method thank you